WB Games. Easy Fatalities. This game's PC launch. Having to pay $5 for a set of Easy Fatalities, even though you can literally pause the game to do the fatality and finish off your opponent. Finish him! And since this set is $5, we're gonna add five sins! See these Cold War and Brazil packs? Yeah, they're not included in the season pass. You gotta purchase them separately. So, to all of you who did get the season pass, do you feel like a sucker now? Because you should. And since both skin packs are $4 each, we're gonna add eight total sins. See this Cold War Scorpion skin? It was a pre-order bonus exclusively at GameStop. <laughs> and look at it now, it's free! Further proving that pre-order bonuses are completely full of shit. Blue Steel Sub-Zero is basically a recolored version of the Gold Scorpion skin. And the worst part is, you actually gotta pay for this one. And since it's two dollars, we're gonna add two sins. Do you have money to waste? Do you not have enough time? Do you wanna unlock all the goodies the easy way because you suck at Mortal Kombat? Well, pay twenty dollars to unlock all the crypt items! And since this option is even in the damn game and it costs twenty dollars, we're gonna add twenty sins! And you wanna know what's even worse? They deliberately gimped coin earnings regardless of what difficulty you play on. So just for that, add 20 more sins. And if you didn't pre-order Mortal Kombat X, you did not get Goro, even though he's already on the damn disc locked behind a paywall. And since he's $5 if you didn't pre-order, we're gonna add five more sins. Classic Katana, Classic Melina, Ninja Mime Johnny, Injustice Scorpion, and Farmer Jax are only available to unlock through the stupid mobile game. Combat pack is $30. $30 for four characters and some skins. That's half the price of the game if you bought it day one. And since the combat pack is $30, you know what that means. 30 more sins. And if you ever wondered why WB Games gets counted as a sin, it's because they are directly responsible for the bullshit business practices that I just listed. So now you know. Faction Wars. Sounds good on paper, ultimately pointless. Millions of years ago, Shinnok, one of the Elder Gods, turned on his fellow deities and invaded the Earth Realm. Previously on Mortal Kombat. Video game cliche number 13, some random guy just standing around, gawking out the obvious threat in front of him. You have the rendezvous coordinates, far into the forest. From there we access the portal to Raiden's Sky Temple. Where there's an angry former elder god and his devils waiting for us. Gods, portals, flying demons. Okay, there's a few problems with this. This game takes place two years after Mortal Kombat 9, right? Why are these guys acting like gods, portals, and demons are something new? Second, there's a portal to Raiden's Sky Temple? Doesn't that make it easier to invade him? And lastly, even though this game does take place two years after Mortal Kombat 9, Quan Chi and Shinnok are just now executing their invasion? When literally at the end of Mortal Kombat 9 they were ready? The world has changed. For the worse, if we do not expel Shinnok from Raiden's temple, he means to poison Earthrealm's life force, the Jinsei. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Jinsei? Life force of Earthrealm? 23 years of Mortal Kombat and we're just now learning about this? <laughs> Man, Netherrealm really is making this shit up as they go along. Quick time events. In Mortal Kombat. Why? Why? Especially when there's no consequence if you fail them. Pointless! Look at this bullshit. This is exactly what I'm talking about. He is getting frozen and burned by Scorpion and Sub-Zero at the same time. And somehow he manages to survive. Because he's Johnny Cage. Get the hell out of here. Also, can we mention how ridiculous it is that Johnny Cage is beating both Scorpion and Sub-Zero? This is like Dan beating up on Ryu and Ken, it's fucking embarrassing. Johnny Cage could have easily shadow kicked Scorpion here, but spears him instead. The end is near. The end is near trope. Boy, look at this MK movie rematch, where Johnny Cage will win once again because the game demands it. Gotta get back to the chopper. Ha ha ha, would have made more sense if you were fighting against Predator. Sonya, get out of there! Ah! Hey, remember when Sub-Zero froze somebody and they instantly shattered? And see, this is the biggest problem in story mode. The characters who shouldn't be that strong are OP as fuck, and the characters who should be strong are total weaklings. This game's like, special forces all the way, fuck everybody else. <laughs> you will pay us attention and you will give us our fair due. No, I won't, and no, I won't. Well, I'll be damned. It is an easier way to invade Raiden Sky Temple. You gotta have better security, my friend. 
Also, Fujin is not a playable character in this game. We must re-fortify the portal's defenses below. No, Fujin. It is too late. Raiden would be excellent at gaming sins. Why the hell would you re-fortify the defenses below when they've already made it to the top? Surely you are pleased to see your friends. I just love how it's like, Cabal, Sindel, and Guy that nobody cares about. <laughs> oh, by the way, where's Jade again? Also, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't Sindel wipe out 90% of Earthrealm's cast in the last game? Why would Quan Chi refer to her as Raiden's friend? Prototype Jax. Smoke. Smoke is dead. I am an Enra. Whoa, an Enra? So is Smoke's ending from MK9 canon? That's what he referred to himself after he beat Shao Kahn. Burned alive, he returned to the mortal realm as an Anenra, a creature of smoke and vapor. Now aware of his true identity, Smoke understands he is no mere assassin. His destiny has been revealed. So that means Smoke is the real champion of Mortal Kombat. Well, game doesn't bother to care about details, so ding! The real Jax wouldn't punch his best friend. Johnny Cage, killing you will be a pleasure. Okay, there's a couple problems with this. First of all, the real Jax currently in this scene is dead, so there's no point in bringing that up. Second, are the Revenants just evil versions of themselves? I mean, they seem to retain the same memories, even pointing out the names of their comrades. Like, what's the point in brainwashing them to become your servants if they can retain the same memories? What about the off chance that their spirit, who has the memories, can fight against the corruption of the Nether Realm? Why not just erase their memory entirely so that they can become completely obedient into serving Shinnok? Confusing shit, ain't it? Sento contains the souls of my ancestors. They guide me. Thanks for that random exposition, Kenshi. Man, this is some straight up MK Deception bullshit right here. Video game cliche number 14, couple of characters just standing around gawking at the obvious threats surrounding them. Big mistake in giving Shinnok pupils for his eyes. It makes him less sinister, thus less threatening. Just FYI, Shinnok's amulet is one of the most powerful talismans in all of Mortal Kombat. It's basically the Kami Dogu which has the power to end existence itself. Just keep that in mind. Uh, saving the hero in the nick of time cliche. Miserable wretch, insignificant speck of feculent scum! How dare you! Well, there goes your intimidation, cred. No wonder why you got your Elder God license revoked. That is mine! Elder God Shinnok resorts to a 12-year-old who got his toy stolen. Shinnok channels his inner Neo, which normally would be badass, but it only makes him look more ridiculous. Well, you guys just witnessed it. Johnny Cage's shadow energy can block out the power of Shinnok, a former Elder God. See what I mean by certain characters being OP as fuck? I'm not sure what just happened to me, but I am sure of this. You don't even think of hurting her. Well, he was just about to claim her soul, you idiot. Okay, Johnny Cage defeating Shinnok. Sell this to me. Justify this. Don't use story mode as an excuse. Legitimately explain to me how this happens. I will count this as a sin as I wait for your response. Why, in the name of all the realms that exist, would Shinnok create an amulet that could imprison him? There has got to be some part of MK lore that I missed because this is incomprehensible. Uh, Sonya Blade is no damsel in distress. But I guess the writers were like, fuck it, she is now! Remain here. The chamber's properties will heal Sonya Blade in short order. You wanna know who could have also used some healing? Liu Kang, Kung Lao, Katana, Jade, Nightwolf, Smoke, Cabal. You know everybody who died in MK9? Let us take the amulet to the Elder Gods. They cannot destroy it. No one can. Ah, great. Elder Gods confirmed for garbage tier. Like, what's the point, man? The war is not over. Quan Chi has escaped. Why are you smiling? Hey, you're blind. How can you tell that he's smiling? Johnny Cage's default costume. Absolutely wretched. Kung Jin. How about you, Cassie? Can you summon anything like that? Or did it skip a generation? Hey Kung Jin, you know that other Kung that's like a million times better than you? And that other Kung before him that's also a million times better than you? Did Shaolin badassery skip a generation? You're all here because you deserve to be. You're beautiful and unique snowflakes. Snowflakes. Today is our team's six week anniversary. Sorry bruh, but a six week anniversary for anything is a sin. He was smart enough to have Mr. Cage put this team together. I'm glad the Shira Ryu chose me to join. New places, new faces. I'm totally into you, but I'm gonna act all disgusted face. Why be worried about Outworld? 
I thought Kotal Khan respected the Reiko Accords. Mortal Kombat Commandments number 8. Thou shalt not speak of thy lame characters such as Reiko. Yeah, you heard me right. I said Reiko is a lame-ass character. Bootleg Shao Kahn gets no props from us. Ladies and gentlemen, the Outworld Civil War. By far the most interesting storyline in this game. Too bad you won't be spending too much time on it. You'll have to read the prequel comic for that. The two most badass characters in the game are resorted to measly henchmen, who will get a grand total of five minutes of screen time, combined. Accident ahead. This one will clear it. So are you a Hanar now? This one lied. This one deceived. This one does not play second fiddle to Kotal Khan. Diva walk! I see that Rain is still rocking his goofy sultan look. See, this is exactly why time jumps suck. They're lazy, and if you didn't read the prequel comic, you'd be like, well, how the hell did she get the amulet? Details, man. They are important. The rain falls when it may. Puns! Quips! Jokes! My goodness, look at this stupid bullshit of Ermac, one of the most powerful characters in all of Mortal Kombat, moving one crate at a time. You know, this fight is quite one-sided. Let's make it a little bit more fair. Well, I hate to break it to you, Kotal Khan. You trusted Kano, so you get exactly what you deserve. And speaking of Kotal Khan, I really hate how Netherone made him so skinny. He is a Khan, the Emperor of Outworld. He should be the most physically imposing character in the game. Look at this. Look at the select screen. Kano is more physically imposing than Kotal Khan, okay? And I'm a big fan of Kano, but this is ridiculous. Damn, Tanya's looking sexier than ever, and I feel ashamed saying that. It's like, hey, Tanya, now that you got lighter skin, you look a little bit more attractive. Not cool. Melina. Kano was to kill you, miserable snake. The hell are you talking about, Melina? You were watching the entire fight. Well, here you go, people. Evident proof. Rain is a fully functional character, yet he is not a playable character in the game. I'm guessing he will be saved for combat pack number two later down the road. Blame it on the WB. <laughs> You won't touch him again. Shoot him! Shoot him! Shoot him before someone strikes your hand off! Right! Rendezvous here. The north entrance. Then what? A simple pick up and go? We bag him if he resists. Resistance might be more possible than you think. Don't sweat it. It comes to that, Sub-Zero won't know what hit him. <laughs> you guys actually think you can bag Sub-Zero. You guys are hilarious. Okay, this statue looks strikingly similar to Quan Chi. Now, I am aware that Quan Chi hired the Lin Kuei to capture Shinnok's amulet, and in return, he would wipe out the Shirai Ryu, which did happen in this timeline. However, in one of Sub-Zero's intros, he says this. I am not your enemy. Then why reform the Lin Kuei? We have debts to repay. Now, if you truly wish to repay your debts, why not destroy this statue of Quan Chi and start anew? Why do you keep bowing to it even if it's just to lure in the special forces? Well, since the game doesn't bother to care about details, it's getting counted as a sin. Okay, you want to know the real sin here? And quite frankly, one of the biggest sins throughout the game? Check this out. So Sub-Zero single-handedly takes out this entire Young Justice League of Earthrealm. And yet, by the end of the game, they're the ones that end up saving Earthrealm. So basically, if they're not the playable character, they exist only to job and make you look good. The inconsistency levels are beyond astronomical. Got a new plan, Cage? You could have followed the old one, Jin. Jackie would be excellent at gaming sins. We'd hire her if she was real. Come on now. You're all winners in my book. Yeah, even though you all got your asses kicked by Sub-Zero single-handedly. Sorry, Sonya. There is only one hot blonde fighting game chick that can rock the unusually long braided pigtails. And you are not her. This is Li Mei. She seeks asylum for her people in Earthrealm. Wow, so they not only de-combated Li Mei, but she also looks like a discount Kelly Who. 
Funny thing is, Kelly Who is in this game. She voices Devorah. Funny how everything works out, right? A talisman, gold, with a center jewel. Melina wields its crimson energy without precision. Well, that's good then. How is that a good thing? Let me put this scenario in front of you. Some guy has a fully loaded AK-47. He's surrounded by a bunch of people. He doesn't know how to shoot. He pulls the trigger. Guess how that turns out? If this talisman is what I suspect it to be, we may all pay a price. Raiden, you have one job. Protect Earthrealm. Kano was the one who stole Shinnok's amulet and gave it to Melina. How did that happen? See, this is why details are important. Yet another reason why time jumps suck. I'm going to the refugee camp. Gotta get to him before he finds a way out. I'll come with. Go get an update on camp security from Colonel Flagg. Why? Because then you won't be here. Now, generally, romance issues are irrelevant since everybody goes to them, but this is a particular case where it does matter. How the hell did these two get to the point where they're at? What caused them to break up? How come they have so much animosity towards each other? What stick does Sonya have up her ass this week? Details, man. You know what? You already get the point. Rime has to be telling the truth. An invasion would violate the Reiko Accords. Breaking Mortal Kombat Commandments number eight again. It's not an alliance, not an aggression pact. Outworld is not our ally. A point you might make with more subtlety, given your surroundings. Sorry, Black, you did not hear this conversation amongst this huge crowd. I can read you. You're not from Outworld. I'm from Earthrealm, like you. But my employer, Kotal Khan, is from Outworld. So now I'm from Outworld. That is some of the dumbest logic I've ever heard in my life. Come on, Black, you're a cool character. Why are you spouting out this nonsense? You take us to the Khan, I'll tell him you took us down. Maybe you get a bonus. You can't lose. Follow me. Greed. Death? For petty theft? Remember where you are. Kung Jin once again foolishly endangers his entire group, this time risking an interdimensional war for a bread thief. Worst character in the game confirmed. I think Ferator is in the wrong game. They should be in Resident Evil. I mean, come on, Tor is literally the Executioner and Dr. Salvador combined. The Earth Brothers, yes. This one must learn more of your diplomatic techniques. We're here to see Kotal Khan. General Blade. You interfere with outworld matters. The penalty is death. Devor wishes to learn about their diplomatic techniques only to immediately sentence them to death. Use a troll, Devora! Use a troll. But, as we honor the Reiko Accords. Breaking Mortal Kombat Commandment number eight again. You want to take this opportunity to tell us what the fuck shit you were thinking? I gotta wonder why you'd risk interrealm war for a bread thief. See, Kung Jin, even your own teammates recognize your stupidity. Lazy Writing 101. If you don't have any development for your character in the main storyline, just give them a flashback. It'll make the audience understand them and make them care about them more. Uh, no it won't. Man, I wish I was playing Shaolin Monks right now. Your family honored me with this memento of your cousin Lao. After his death. A death you caused! You made him fight Shao Kahn! And stood there while that bastard snapped his neck! You go too far, Kung Jin. Sorry, Raiden. For once he's right. You will have to forever hold those L's in your chest. Don't be salty about it. They care only about what is in your heart, not whom your heart desires. It's too late for me. No, it's not, Jin. You are not a revenant. Then's when it's too late. Story mode or not, Kung Jin defeating Kotal Khan in any universe is a sin. I mean, this is just another example of the inconsistency levels in this game. Literally 10 minutes ago, Kung Jin got his ass handed to him by Sub-Zero. Now he beats the freaking Emperor of Outworld? Ridiculous! I thought we got rid of this dumb communicator bullshit from MK vs. DC. I guess I was wrong. Raiden, what'd you find? Shinnok's amulet has been stolen, replaced by an exquisite duplicate. Like I said before, Raiden, you had one job. One job! You are no longer worthy of being protector of Earthrealm. Something is wrong. I will speak to you once I- Losing a connection right before something important, cliche. This is what split us up in the first place. You disappear in your work. Never time for me and Cassie. I had responsibilities. Sorry you couldn't be the center of attention. There was a time when you cared more about your family than your job. General. Sorry, Sonya. I'm with Johnny on this one. I knew plenty of women who put their job before their kids. Guess what? Their kids turned out to be shitheads. You lose! I wouldn't do that. Aw, oh, come on. Where's your sense of... Adventure. Character making a dumbass decision for the sake of adventure trope. 
Quick question, are you a fan of Scorpion, Sub-Zero, Jax, or Quan Chi? If you are, you must be having a ball seeing them get their asses kicked. Yep, just another example of inconsistent power levels. Johnny Cage doesn't immediately die from this. Whoa, now I'm really confused as shit. So, the Revenants come in different bodies? If that's the case, then how come when they defeat Quan Chi later on, Jax, Scorpion, and Sub-Zero return to life in their original bodies? Um, need some clarification here. Game has interactables, but no stage fatalities. And yes, actual stage fatalities, not those bullshit stage brutalities. Those don't count. Hmm. I guess transforming into a Revenant is just as slow as downloading a porn video on a dial-up connection. Ha ha ha. Raiden X Machina. Man, Raiden out of nowhere. Speaking of X Machinas, Quan Chi's fortress is in the Nether Realm in this timeline. Aren't Raiden's powers weak in other realms, especially the Nether Realm? How's he able to perform this spell? <laughs> Push Johnny Cage, bury Liu Kang. This will easily go down as one of the most awful segments in Mortal Kombat history. And that's saying something. They have essentially made Quan Chi, one of the most powerful sorcerers in all of Mortal Kombat, into a little bitch. I mean, I get it, Sonya is an MKOG, but this is embarrassing, man. And to top it all off? Yeah, absolutely embarrassing. You have ruined the source of his sorcery! The others are restored to the living. By coupling Quan Chi's dark magics to my own, I was able to restore their souls. You want to know who could have also had their souls restored? Liu Kang, Kung Lao, Jade, Smoke, Cabal, Nightwolf. Are you getting annoyed yet? Good, because I'm annoyed that you killed them off. You seem to know this Kano intimately. Not the word I'd use, but yes. I chased him for years until he escaped to Outworld after Shinnok's invasion. So Kano escaped to Outworld after the Nether Realm invasion, yet he somehow recovered Shinnok's amulet, which is in Earth Realm. Ugh, my brain cannot handle this nonsense. Why would he return now? You know, that's a good question, Kenshi. Even if Kano has crucial intel, who's to say Sony won't straight up murder his ass? Like she almost did in this very sequence. That is unfitting for a cunning warrior. Honestly, if you have tech like this, why would you ever reveal yourself? Why even infiltrate this compound if you were just gonna try to leave? And he shows up alone? Man, Kano's plan is making less sense by the second. Hello, love. Been a while. I am severely disappointed that Kano didn't say, Hello, baby. Did you miss me? No, no, I disagree with this. Kano is not capable of being strangled. This is how they greet each other in Australia. Gave us the details on Molina's location. She has the amulet, but she's got a lot of protection. And once we get to the jungle, we will prove this to be incorrect. More lazy writing. Ugh, one of the absolute worst alternate costumes ever made. It's almost as bad as... Yeah, let's try to forget about that. Well, well, look at what we have here. Baraka, yet another fully functional character that was cut from the game. Expect him in combat pack number two. Coming whenever. <laughs> Thanks a lot, WB! We interrupt this Mortal Kombat game to bring you a segment of Gladiator. And Baraka died just as he lived. A jobber. More taunting by WB and Netherrealm. They're like, hey players, you know Rain, this cool character? <laughs> yeah, you can fight him a couple times in story mode, but you can't play as him. And we're not gonna make him playable unless you start begging for him. Mmm, damn, scene does not contain any Tanya Torkin. I know you said you weren't friends but you're not killing them. There is literally no reason for Cassie to stop Devora from killing Tanya and Rain. Literally none! I have a quick question for you, Melina. How do you expect to rule Outworld when you can't even handle a bunch of bees? Story mode only fatality. And come to think of it, Melina has those massive jaws. Why don't she just chomp off Devorah's face and take her with her? Hashtag logic. And that's two prominent Mortal Kombat characters. Dead. Within a matter of 10 minutes. My read meter is detecting some Devora favoritism. Not that that's a bad thing for me personally, but it's still sinful as shit. Well, thanks for that. I know I'll never eat again. Anorexia. You know, this power that Kotal Khan possesses is pretty incredible. It will never be used again. The Reiko Accords require- Oh, for crying out loud, will you please shut the hell up about Reiko? They never suspected one of their own to be a disciple of our lord. This one lives to serve Shinnok. Unsurprising plot twist is unsurprising. Did you guys forget that Devoro turned on Melina earlier? This one serves Melina no longer! <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what I thought. Well, this game has officially reached metal status. Revenants riding on hell rams. Kick fucking ass. Minus one sin.
But we have to immediately put that sin back in because derp derp derp, Katana, Kung Lao, Liu Kang. Remember these main characters from Mortal Kombat? Yeah, they're gonna play second fiddle in this game. He shows his face after 25 years, just as Shinnok's amulet is in play. That's not a coincidence. That's why I need you. Your Quan Chi expertise. Here's another sin where resurrected combatants actually retain the memories of being a revenant. I've trained all my life. Can fight my way out of nearly anything. But I still feel like a second-rate cage. Here's the thing, since Sonya and Johnny Cage are both in this game, you kinda are. If one of them were absent, you wouldn't be. Simple, ain't it? Dumbass guards send down only one guy, making this inevitable escape plan much easier. More lazy writing. <laughs> Yield. Takeda's cool and all, but him beating Scorpion this easy? I don't buy it. Speaking of which, I am noticing a theme throughout this entire story mode. It's like, hey everybody, we got a whole new generation of fighters, and you will like them. All those old characters that you grew up loving and playing? Yeah, forget about them. Their time is up. Fuck them all, they gotta go. It's time for some new blood, bitches! And all I gotta say to that is, I'll be ready when I'm fucking ready. Your mother was killed by Red Dragon assassins. I was the target. Su Chin was the victim. Son of a bitch! It was your fault! No, you idiot. He just told you Red Dragon killed your mother. It's their fault. Look at these rookies just sticking their heads out like morons. The Earthrealmers. Devora freed them. You know, half of the conflicts in this game are due to massive assumptions and the fact that people cannot properly communicate with one another. And that, for all intents and purposes, is a sin. Absolutely pointless quick time event featuring Takeda and Reptile. You know, since Takeda's a freaking telepath. <laughs> Wait, did did Aaron Black just run at Takeda with his guns? His bullet shooting guns? Instead of, you know, pulling the trigger? Wow, you have officially made one of the most badass characters into an idiot. Hey, you want another example of inconsistent power levels? Ermac has not killed everybody in this scene. <sighs> Takeda, you are a telepath. You do not need to hold people's heads to read their mind. Devora, and the Earthrealmers? She stole the amulet, then helped them escape. She betrayed us to the Thunder God. I already explained why this is a sin. Skip! Have you been able to determine where Devora was headed? We think she's headed for the Sea of Blood. Damn. Dad? She's coming here, to Quan Chi. There's a secret portal near the Sea of Blood. Quan Chi had it built when we were getting ready to invade Outworld. Okay, let's just point out, they have radio reception between realms, okay? We already seen this in the last Mortal Kombat game, and this is no exception. Okay, I know who Serena is. Question is, do you? If not, you were probably one of those people that were like, Who is this bitch? Why is she important? Well, guess what? The game will not bother to care about details, so... But why is it Quan Chi travels by conventional means? He seems unable to fully use his magic. He's weaker than when I was in his service. How is Quan Chi weaker when he's in the freaking Nether Realm? <sighs> Hashtag Mortal Kombat logic. These guys don't notice Jack's obviously crouching behind this rock. Okay, let's ponder this for a minute, people. Sindel steps on Jax's hands in order to make him fall off a cliff, as if he has nerves in his metal arms in order to feel pain. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, laugh at it. I know I did. And speaking of Sindel, can we just mention how ridiculous the concept is of Revenant Sindel? So she went from being an evil zombie to being a different type of evil zombie? <laughs> okay. Quan Chi reunited me with my family. He will do the same for you. That's a pretty dumb thing to say when his actual family is alive. AKA, not Revenants. And Sindel, yet another clearly functional character that was obviously cut from the game. Expector in combat, pack number two. Whenever WB Games decides. It is possible to escape Quan Chi Katana. I can aid you, as Bihan aided me. You became too familiar with Bihan. Allowed emotion to corrupt you. Emotion freed me. <laughs> yep, here we go again. Another crucial plot detail just glazed over. In your weakened state, is it possible for you to release Shinnok? Let's talk about this weakened state for a moment, shall we? Quan Chi fell off his hell ram. That's it! <laughs> that is all that happened to him throughout this entire previous sequence, and all of a sudden he's weakened? 
And remind you, we're in Quan Chi's fortress, which is in the Nether Realm in this timeline. The Nether Realm, the place where he is the most powerful sorcerer. See what I mean when I said earlier they're trying to make Quan Chi into a little bitch? Yeah, insulting. Jax's arms are in his heavy weapons variation in this cutscene. However, when we start the match with Liu Kang, it's back to his wrestler variation. Okay, now the following sequence is one of the biggest problems story mode has. Check this out. Quan Chi is vulnerable. They have him captured. The rest of the Revenants are right there in the Nether Realm with him. Devora is already on her way. Why didn't they just gather in the Nether Realm, wait for Devora, ambush her, take back Shinnok's amulet, crush Quan Chi's nuts again to release all the Revenants, and then kill his ass? Bam! Game over! Or am I the only one that's making any sense here? Apparently so! Advise Secretary Blake that Quan Chi is in custody. We'll be moving him to the Supermax facility at Fort Charles within the hour. Okay, let's entertain that logic for a moment, shall we? They're gonna move a Nether Realm demon sorcerer to a human Supermax prison. <laughs> Derp -a derp General. Master Hasashi, I hadn't received word you were coming. I will have Quan Chi. We have things under control. You can- He must die. Wow, this is literally round two of, Hey Scorpion, don't kill this guy or else we're all gonna suffer dire consequences later on. Jeez, does this fucker not learn? A bunch of ninjas with swords are charging at fully armed special forces. Take a moment to laugh at that. I wish you no harm, General Blade. Says this after whipping her ass. Let's embrace the absurdity of this scene for a moment. Scorpion and Sub-Zero, Hanzo Hasashi, and Kawhi Liang are having tea together. When the fuck did Mortal Kombat turn into a dating sim? Clearly I did not get the memo. When I finally killed Sector, I discovered the Lin Kuei had not sacrificed its honor with the Cyber Initiative. We had abandoned it long before. Wow, yet another crucial story detail just glossed over. Sector isn't exactly a pushover character, okay? Wow. Frost is in the game, and she's not a playable character. Yeah, yeah, cue the obvious Frozen jokes. Hey, hey, just chill out, Frost. This is lame. This is lame. Frost is not a playable character in this game. This is lame. This is lame. She was cast aside, and that's a shame. Define irony. Frost, a ninja with ice powers, turns out to be the most hot-headed individual in this scene. <laughs> well, hell has definitely frozen over now. Scorpion and Sub-Zero are bowing to each other. Wait a minute. I thought we were done with the puns. Scorpion. We can- <laughs> My name is Hanzo Hasashi! I find it rather disturbing how this game is actively trying to prevent calling him Scorpion. It's like, hey Scorpion, everything that made you cool? Yep. Just totally forget about it. New generation, you don't matter anymore. And Quan Chi died just like he lived in this game. A bitch. There will be no surprises from you, Mr. Cage. Bring him. Johnny Cage becomes the MacGuffin. Praise be to Lord Shinnok. Liu Kang does not say this in his preacher voice. It should be like, Praise be to Lord Shinnok. <laughs> there is an Earthrealm force in Netherrealm. I am aware. They will be neutralized. And they will never be neutralized. Mortal Kombat Commandment number 9. Thou shalt not show thy lame characters such as Boraicho. By the way, if any of you are wondering why we hate Boraicho so much, it's because of this. Now, you may think it's funny, but we think it's one of the dumbest fatalities ever created. In our eyes, he is not a redeemable character. Oh hey, Raiden, I almost forgot you were in this game. Kung Lao and Liu Kang, they were like sons. I would move the heavens to bring them back to the light. Really, Raiden? You would move the heavens to bring them back to the light? You. Are. A. God! Ah, finally, the real heroes of Mortal Kombat, making their cameo appearance in their original form. Oh, fuck you, game. Fuck you, trying to retcon Devora into this timeline even though she was never seen, heard, or mentioned in this timeline. Tarkatans are eaten so easily. See, even Devora recognizes the Tarkatans' jobber status. Remember, Baraka is a fully functional character, yet he is not a playable character. Blame it on the- you know what? Fuck them. Yes, thank you. See, people? Even Netherrealm themselves recognize what a terrible character Bo Raicho is. I will go ahead and add a like for this. I would not boast of victory premature. <laughs> I have already won, Raiden. 
I'm sorry, Raiden, but he's right. Shinnok has one. Bullshit circumstances are the reason why the rest of story mode exists. Smoke does the wobbly H. Vomit cocoon. Elder God period blood. We interrupt this Mortal Kombat game to bring you a segment of Doom, which at this point sounds like a much better choice to be playing. Yes. Tremble before me, Elder Gods, as I absorb Earthrealm's power. Speaking of the Elder Gods, where the hell are they this entire time? <laughs> Elder Gods. Further proof that they are garbage here. That shockwave fried the leads. Then let's get going. We're almost out of time. This is one of the most convenient timings in the history of convenient timings. Bring them to me! Or not. The woods. Come on. How? How did you manage to lose them? You were literally right there! You know those bullshit circumstances that I mentioned earlier? <laughs> Bear witness to one of many of them. You cannot convince me that this Teen Titan group can take down Kotal Kahn, Ermac, Reptile, Aaron Black, and Ferator, and Kotal Kahn's army. Get out of here. I am not Reptile in this shot. Stop! You need water. Water? He needs water to heal an acid spit to the eyes. You know the worst thing? It actually works! Here's another example of bullshit circumstances. Enjoy it! Ladies' choice! And another! And another. Squeeze, squeeze, Tor! Your eyes, so bright. Gonna carve them out! Trickery! Deceit! Shinnok's been freed. He's at Raiden's Sky Temple. He's already infected Earthrealm's life force. Boil. No, duh! You didn't notice the blood red sky that's been hovering above you for the past 10 minutes? And yet another bullshit circumstance. Let's see how much time Kotal Kahn's army wastes when they could have easily killed these guys. So, do it already. I mean, for crying out loud, why doesn't Black just shoot all of them? Bam, 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 bam. Game over. <laughs> Saving our heroes in the nick of time cliche. You stood together against formidable odds. Lesser warriors would not have fared so well. Inspirational speech in the middle of a brawl. Proceed to the Sky Temple. Earthrealm's fate lies with you. Okay, Sub-Zero, let's take a look at this situation really quick, shall we? These four, whose asses you kicked at the beginning of this game, single-handedly, who would all be dead right now had you not interfered. And you're gonna leave the fate of Earthrealm to them. Hashtag Mortal Kombat logic. Has your mother ever told you what I did to her friends? Kill them all in the blink of an eye. Hey, you heard it straight from the horse's mouth, people. And yet she ends up getting her ass kicked by Cassie Cage. What was that we said about power levels earlier? Hey, Takeda, you know you have mechanical whips, right? Those mechanical whips can lift you up? Nope. Okay. You're the bug, I'm the windshield. Okay, I have heard some pretty terrible dialogue throughout Mortal Kombat history. That's gotta rank up as one of the worst. Look, Takeda and Jackie are cool, but nobody can deny the absurdity of this scene. Liu Kang and Kung Lao are two of the most powerful combatants in Mortal Kombat history, and she's taking them on by herself, along with Smoke. Sindel wiped out half the cast of the last game, and she's barely able to hold her own against Takeda, along with Katana. And need I remind you, they both got injured. This, the, the, this is really reaching it. This is really reaching it. Look, Cassie's cool and all, but just like Johnny Cage, the fact that this doesn't end in instant Shinnok victory is sinful as shit. These 
This is what awaits those who defy me. Excruciating, exquisite death. Classic villain cliche number one, torturing their enemies instead of outright killing them. Thus giving the hero time to make a comeback and save the day. Well, we have to commend Netherrealm on this one. They managed to create a boss character that's cheaper than Shao Kahn. You wanna know the worst thing? Corrupted Shinnok isn't even that hard to beat. His moves are just OP as fuck. Well, we've reached an all new low in Mortal Kombat history. Now, remember people, the developers actually thought this was okay. Cassie Cage, daughter of Johnny Cage and Sonya Blade, is going to defeat the almighty powerful Elder God Shinnok at his maximum power. All because of that ha ha ha, Johnny Cage beat Shinnok at the beginning of the game, so it's only fitting that we end the game with Cassie Cage, his daughter, beating Shinnok as well. Ha 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 ha! I have not seen a push this extreme since Roman Reigns headlined WrestleMania. And we all know how that turned out. It'll kill you! Must be cleansed. Hurry! So, we're just gonna gloss over how easily they got Raiden out of Shinnok's skeletal hand? Okay. I am not Takeda in this scene. Is he alive? Barely. I'll help him. They're gonna help him? With what? Your staff bow powers? Well, of course the special forces would show up after everything has already been settled. As the new rulers of the Nether Realm, heed me. No longer will I simply defend Earthrealm. I will seek out and destroy all who threaten it. See, I absolutely love this. Everything has come full circle. MK11, new guys are good guys, good guys are bad guys, and bad guys are worse guys. However, obvious setup for an obvious sequel is obvious. And now, on to some non-story mode sins. MK1 Tactics. <laughs> Some of the worst costumes are for the best variations, and some of the worst variations have the best costumes. For instance, why can't I wear Aaron Black's hat throughout all variations? Why the hell does Shinnok have his stupid bone hands in his necromancer variation? And speaking of variations, let's talk about special moves. How come certain characters who have iconic moves are only limited to one variation? For instance, how come Raiden only has his teleport in his displacer variation? What if I want to use it while I'm playing the Thunder of Storms variation? Garbage limitations are garbage. Liu Kang is still not yelling his signature <laughs> when doing his bicycle kick. And speaking of Liu Kang, let's talk about him and Kung Lao's default costume. Liu Kang and Kung Lao are canonically dead, so why do they have old versions of themselves as if they never died? Just as a what-if scenario? Amusement? Either way, it's a sin. Jump scares in the crypt, because why? Cassie Cage's Miley Cyrus haircut. 23 years of Mortal Kombat, still no taunts. This is the closest thing to teabagging as you're gonna get in this game. The inputs of some of the brutalities. Some of them are pathetically easy, some of them are unjustifiably stupid. The following fatalities are lame.
Cage wins. It took 23 years for this fatality to come to fruition. You want to know how to improve this fatality? As Black is walking towards his opponent, have him do some revolver ocelot trick shots. Kind of like this. Finish off the opponent as is, and then have him blow his opponent's brains out with the final shot. And the worst sin of all? Some of the x-rays are better than the fatalities and brutalities combined. of Shao Kahn. <laughs> Corporate Commando wins. Catch out. It's official. You suck.